All right. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Let's get this kind of shifted here. How is everyone doing tonight? <clears throat> All right. Let's get this up and rolling. All right. Perfect. Well, hey, my name is Kurt. I'm a dad who draws, and this is our Monday edition. <laughs> This is our Monday edition of uh, of our Monday edition of Monday Night Live. I I looked down in the chat and I was just kind of seeing who was there and I lost my train of thought. There's only so many things you could do, right? <laughs> All right, Leah, John, good to see you, the two of you there. And looks like there's a couple other people in the house. They're just kind of shy and quiet, but that's okay. So. Uh, we're going to draw this uh, western this uh, western scene from uh, a place called Goldfield uh, Ghost Town out in Arizona. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to draw tonight. So looking at the uh, doing good, Kurt. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Leah. So uh, what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to show you I'm going to show you three different things before we get started. And uh, this should help you to uh, um, draw better landscapes, okay? So the first thing I wanna point out to you is this idea, oh, hey, Brandy, hey, Brandy, how you doing? Brandy, you've been doing a great job. Great job of working through those tutorials. I'm, I'm really impressed. So keep it up, okay? <laughs> uh, so what I'm gonna show you is three different things. The first thing I wanna, talk about it's called atmospheric perspective and we all know what perspective is As something gets closer to a horizon line it gets smaller it gives the perception that it is further back in space well there's a thing called atmospheric perspective and that is an object when you're outside an object that is uh, hey rebecca is i, I just looked down rebecca Hello from Tennessee. <laughs> hey, that Tennessee, that sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, was it Lincoln? No, he was from Nebraska. I was trying to think of who was from Tennessee. Born on a mountaintop. Yes. No, it was uh, born on a mountaintop. In it was Daniel Boone. Davy Crockett. Davy Crockett. <laughs> Davy Crockett was born on a mountaintop in Tennessee. <laughs> Anyways, yes, okay, so um, uh, so atmos atmospheric perspective. When you're outside looking at any any object, uh, before between you and that object, there's atmosphere. And atmosphere is made up of little uh, little um, bits of droplets of water. So essentially something that is much more further away, is going to become more diluted or it's going to be less contrasty so take a look take a look at our picture right here and i could prove it to you right away look look down here let me make sure i'm on a, on a layer here to itself okay and what i want to show you the first thing is look look how much contrast is is in are on inside of these different bricks here you could really see some dark, really dark darks and really light lights. You see that? But then you, then you, and you can also see those really dark contrasts going, going on throughout our, um, uh, our water tower here. Okay. But then when we take a look at these mountains way in the background here, look how faint the contrast between the darks and the light is as strong. So, that is being created by atmospheric perspective. So when you are drawing, especially anything that is outside and you're trying to draw something to make it look like it's in the background, just drop down your contrast, okay? And that will help uh, add to the depth of something. We're gonna, we're gonna do that tonight, but I just, I wanna point out that first thing to you. So it's atmospheric perspective, okay? All right, let's uh, clear this off. Okay, the next, the next little thing I want to show you is the idea of creating a perspective grid, okay? Now, 
If we look at this, um, this water tower, we might be like, oh my gosh, how do I work out the perspective of this water tower? And I'm going to show that to you. So let's, let's just start off. Um, and these are just, we're not drawing the picture yet. I'm just kind of giving you some overview here. Uh, so let's just draw three, three lines just like that. Okay. And, and the bottom one down here, okay, let's just, let's just say that's going about like this, okay? That's a very, it's a, like a letter V, but it's wide open. You see that right there? It's really wide open, all right? Now at the top, now watch carefully what I do here. At the top, you're going to make this really angled. You see that? And this one's going to be really angled, just like that. So both th this is heading back to a vanishing point and this is heading back to a vanishing point now why we use a perspective grid so we don't have to locate where that vanishing point is okay but we could still draw this thing in perspective let me show you how to do that so what i want to do is from this point we'll call this a and we'll call this b all right i want to divide this segment in half and i could just I could just estimate it of where that's going to be. And then down here, we'll call this uh, the letter. This will be C and this will be D. OK, so I'm going to divide C and D. I'm just going to visualize. Guesstimate where those where those are in half. So now I'm going to connect that connect those two dots there. All right, let's do it again. We're going to take A. And now this one right there, we're going to divide that in half and just guesstimate it. The same thing over here, we're just going to guesstimate where the half is there. Connect that. Let's do that down below here. We're going to guesstimate the halves. The halves right there. And connect that. So what is happening is, and we could do it again. Half. What's happening, we are creating a perspective grid. So now whenever, let's just say I wanted, this was going to be a tower and I wanted to draw a window up here. Well, I just have to follow the perspective grid and get the top and bottom. If, if I wanted to draw a window down here, I would just do that. You see that? I'd follow that grid. So I have drawn all those windows in perspective. And that's how we use a perspective grid. So whenever you have any type of object, uh, you can create a perspective grid by establishing the the top first and the bottom and then everything else in, in between can be you, you could use a perspective grid to get it all lined up. Okay. All right. Excellent. And there was one more thing I was going to tell you and now I can't can't think of it off the top of my head. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Well, let me let me just say this as long as we're on it. And I don't know if this was it. I don't remember, but it sure will be helpful here. OK, so we do have this uh, water tower and the top of our water tower is a is the container that holds all the water. But essentially, it's it's just a cylinder. It's a cylinder that's up high. So let's pretend like in the picture here. Let's just say this was my eye level. This is this is the level of my eye that it's looking out, and I could look up. I'm looking up, and I could see that uh, water tower. Well, if the water tower was right there, it's not going to have. It's going to be very subtle. In fact, uh, the more I look at this picture, watch this. There's there is a water tower right there. I didn't even notice that till just now. And then, and then as I go up, I'm going to see more, more of that cylinder. You see this? Because it's much higher up. So let's change this. Yeah, so as I go up, I'm going to see more of that water tower. Because it's much more higher than I'm at. All right, first time here, are we supposed to be drawing on the computer? No, no, Rebecca. You can grab just, I only use the, I only use the, that's a great question. 
Yeah, just use use paper and pencils. Um, I, I just use the computer here because it's easier for me to demonstrate what's going on. Some people do use uh, Procreate. That's the program I'm using, and I'm using a Apple Pencil. But um, I don't use any fancy brushes. Um, the I only use the, the the brush I actually use is called a 6B pencil. So I try and keep this as authentic as I can. And um, you know my my choice my choice of drawing instrument. I'll show this to you here. Um, is is, it, is a Crayola is a Crayola pencil. I, I love these things. And I don't use these things to color with. I just like the softness of the lead, okay? So yeah, you could you could do that. You could you don't need to use a computer, all right? Uh, no, you could watch, draw, follow along. Yep, yep, that's so true. Okay, so so this is the other thing is once, once an object is higher above you, you're gonna see more of the bottom. As it gets down to eye level, you're gonna see it even out. Okay, so those are the three little things I want to show you. I wanted to demonstrate for you is, is your, your eye, your line of sight, atmospheric perspective, and using a, um, using a perspective grid. Okay, any questions? So now any questions? There's been great questions. Rebecca, that was an excellent question you asked about drawing on the computer. And thank you, John, for helping answering that anything else okay i'm going to go ahead and get started here so oh one other thing um and this kind of came up last week some of you might be drawing on a large pad so some of you might be using like a uh like, like look at this here you know this this here is a nine by twelve drawing pad well i wouldn't I wouldn't draw what we're going to draw tonight on a 9x12. I, you might use a 9x12, but I would make your drawing small. I would do something maybe in this room. I don't even know how big this thing is. Uh, nope, don't know how big this is. This, just, this might be a, like 5x7, okay? So 5x7, and you might even go smaller than that, okay? It might be a 4x6. And that will allow you to keep up and to keep drawing, okay? If you go much bigger, it's going to be hard to keep up because you have more real estate. Now, if you like the drawing that you drew, you can always come back, watch the video, pause it, and draw much bigger and draw it at a slower pace. I draw on a big pad like that, yeah. So, Brandy, you might want to, tonight, you might want to make your drawing just a little bit smaller. I know that, uh, I believe that you drew that dog in a small section of your pad. So just, just keep them a little bit smaller, okay? All right, no more talking. Let's get to drawing. Well, I'll still talk, but... All right, first thing I'm going to do is just to draw a, a box to help me just to contain, contain my drawing here, okay? And usually with, with, with any type of drawing, I always start off with a gesture of some sort so let's let's look let's look at our drawing and see what we have here and see where things are so um if i'm going to gesture this i'm going to i'm going to hold my pencil from the back and i'm just going to quickly just roughly throw in some shapes this this is not going to take very long just to get a quick idea where things might go, okay? And there, I'm done. Just like that. Just quickly put some things together there. All right. So one of the things when we come to drawing is I like to use this thing called tools of measurement. These are, these are things that I look for in my picture to get my proportion right. So one of the tools of measurement is trying to draw the negative space. What do I mean? What, what, let me show you what I mean that by that. So look at this. This is negative space, right? You know, I'm going to change this to be red. So this here, you see that? That's a negative shape. Look at that. That's a negative shape right there. All right, so let's draw that shape. I'm just looking at the shape and I'm just kind of roughing 
roughing that shape in. I don't even, it's gonna be light. All right, so that's, a, that's not too bad. And there's another one over here. Let's bring this, this, this one is like this right here. You see this? There's another negative shape right there. All right. Sometimes it's easier to draw in the negative shape versus the thing that you're trying to draw. So let's just try and get that. That doesn't have to be perfect. Just, just kind of rough it in for right now. Okay, let's let's look at let's look at this right here. Let's look at our ground plane here. So it's going to come down like this. You see that? Yes, yes. You, I see, Brandy. You've been you have been dividing your page up into smaller areas. Okay, so let's let's just draw the outward shape of this brick wall. This wall made out of adobe brick or something like that okay all we're doing right now is just putting in the big shapes of things that's all i'm trying to accomplish here okay see so we have this little house here so let's make sure we make that small it's not very big it's it's off in the distance and we have another one over here And then we have our mountains coming down and I'm just going to cut in here just a little bit like a little negative shape right there. Okay. And over here it looks like there's some more buildings. And I'm just going to quickly indicate a little a little square there. Okay, let's go ahead now and, and get this top. We're gonna start with this top platform way up high in the sky there. So this top platform I would consider might be the most trickiest thing because it's really going to establish your uh, perspective, okay? So let's start, let's start easy here. Let's just, oh, cancel that. Let's put a dot right there, you see that? You see where that dot is? Let's try and estimate where that dot will go in our picture. I'm gonna go right about there, I think. I'm gonna kind of make it light. Okay, next, next, look at that one. It's gonna be right down there, the other corner, okay? I'm looking at the relationship between those two. Oops, wrong color. All right, now let's look across. There's one over here. There's one gonna be down here, you see that? Remember, it's a little bit lower. So let's let's take that now and connect those. Let's connect those dots. All right. Let's check that against the shape on this over here. Okay, so my shape doesn't look too bad. Look at that, my shape is a little bit off. It's a little bit off, but you know, I'm just gonna go with it. I'm, I'm gonna just go with what I got there. <clears throat> and if I go too fast, if you need me to slow down, just ask me to slow down and I'll be more than happy to. 
Okay, next thing is, is I'm going to draw the, sh the, the side here, the front corner of this thing. And it looks like I'm going to come down just about in this angle. And the other side is going to come down in this angle. Okay. And then the back side. It's going to be about like that. Keep it light. Keep drawing light here, okay? Okay, so let's 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 go to the first platform here, and that's that's going to be about at that angle, and then this is going to come across the front there. You see that? This is where you want to be at. This this is going to set everything in motion here. All right, let's go ahead and, and uh, kind of estimate where our uh, perspective grid is going to be. All right, so we're going to go halves, halfway down, halfway down here, and we got that right there. And then let's do it to the other side. So there's the top, just like that. We're going to go halfway down and connect those two as well. Okay. Let's turn these lines into boards here. So we're just going to give them just a little bit of thickness. A little bit of thickness. Okay, now that's now that's the, probably the hardest part. So let's go ahead and connect these up here. And we're just going to go straight across. I'm trying to when I'm drawing, I'm drawing from my elbow. And that keeps my lines nice and straight. If I draw from my wrist, I don't have as much control over getting a nice long straight line. I'm also turning my my iPad just a little bit to make it a little bit easier. Watch, I'll even do this so you can actually see what I'm you can watch what I'm doing here. See if I if I draw from right to left, I can get a much better line. So, if that means that you need to uh, spin your paper to do that, uh, by all means do that. All right, let's, I'm going to get the other side, too, over here. Yep, I'm going to spin it again. So I'm drawing from my left to right, because I'll, I'll make a much better line that way. This is all part of the structural part of our drawing. 
And once this is done, it will be a little bit, we can be a little bit more freehand with it. But if we don't get this right, then it's going to look weird. Our, our eyes are going to go to this part that seems to be mistakenly drawn. Okay, let's go ahead and get this water tower. And this is this tower, this top barrel is going to be straight up and down. And straight up and down on the other side as well. Now, watch carefully what I do here. Between these two things is going to be my minor axis. Probably a little more over there. And I'm going to want to draw a sphere. And what do I mean by that? So look down here at the bottom. That would be a minor axis. And if I'm going to draw an oval, it's going to be like this. See, A is going to be perfectly reflective of B. Let me do that again over here for you. There's my minor axis. It goes across the shortest point in an oval. And I'm going to do this. So those two are reflective. And you can also draw it like this. You see that? It's harder to draw them a little bit bigger. But A and B are almost reflective. So this kind of is the my minor axis. And now there's another one down here. It's going to have the same axis, same minor axis right about there. But, it, but it's not going to be as foreshortened. So we want to make this just a little bit more narrower. See how I'm much more narrower? In this one down here, I'm like this. In this one up here, I'm like this. That's because, we'll call this A, and this is B, it's because A is higher up above my vanish, above my eye line. Draw the sides of this tank here. And I could draw the under part of this platform just a little bit, just like that. Okay. All right, let's let's look at this uh, little brick wall here before we move on. So let's let's just start in and I'm looking at it. Okay, so let's these are gonna be pretty small bricks, so don't don't go hog wild. But let's just get this first layer in. Okay, the next next ones are going to be stair-stepped. And then we're just going to almost be like brick layers and start adding these to the wall. Just go slowly. Don't don't feel rushed. Then I'm going to add just a little bit of tone. Okay. And 
And then you could even, I'm gonna go ahead and add some tone to my water tower, the, the tank up on top. Not a lot, just a little bit right now. That will help me visualize it. And the bottom tank as well. Okay. All right, let's continue. Let's get this little uh, building, this trading post, whatever it is in the back. And first thing, now, don't make this too big. I almost got carried away myself here. I'm gonna start off with this angle. Just getting that signage back there. And we're just going to estimate this here. And all I'm really doing here is just trying to draw, trying to draw shapes, okay? And it looks like it looks like if I look closely there's some people so I'm just going to just make some interesting shapes there's some darker form darker shapes some middle tone shapes And this is all going to have a little bit of a tone to it. So much of painting, when you're painting things, a lot of times you're just looking to paint the shapes. That's a, that is actually not, not a bad piece of advice. All right, so it looks like there's some type of hotel in the back here, okay? And it looks like it turns the corner. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit off on mine, but that's okay. It's okay if you get a little bit off. So I'm going to tone this picture in here just a little bit. Just looking for shapes. Looking for shapes. Look at this brush here. This is a little high. Look, there's a looks like there's some type of wheel over here. Interesting shapes going on. All this should be toned in. That way we get the brightness of this adobe wall to pop forward. So at this point, a lot of the drawing I'm doing is just looking for value and dropping in shapes and value.
right, looks like I've got some type of trees here. So I'm just going to very casually indicate foliage with this uh, little, little stair step thing I got going here. Trying to create some type of texture. And I'm even gonna add a little value into that as well. Then it looks like I've got some dark value. It's almost like a straight line going across here, but it kind of gets blended into the tree. So I'm just gonna add this darker value up here and let the bottom edge be kind of the edge of my tree, you see that? And it has some type of signage here. Oops. Okay, look at, let's go to the other side here, and it looks like we've got this other bit of a building that's coming in. So I'm just going to indicate that also with a, almost like a silhouette shape. And then as I finish my street off here, it kind of has some type of fence, and then this curve, this curb coming around, you see this? And then this is just sand. So I think very carefully, I'm just gonna add a general tone to this front area here. And I'm gonna add just some like surface lines. Surface lines are, are something that you might add to something to give it surface or texture. So. For example, if you had a cube here and I wanted to describe the surface, I would add surface lines like this, you see? That tells you that that surface of that cube is flat. So with the ground here, I'm going to do the same thing, but my lines are going to be horizontal. And I might even add just a couple little specks to kind of indicate that this is uh, granular. Okay, I'm going to come back to my water tower here. And what really makes this tower for me work really nicely is the silhouette of the beams in the back. So I kind of want to fill those in carefully. Oops.
Then I'm going to come in here with my tank. Be mindful of where those front wood planks are. When you're, when you're feeling in tone, one thing I've noticed that uh, happens a lot, and be careful of this, let's just say you had an area right here and you were feeling in tone with, sometime, sometimes when you feel in tone, you'll do this sort of thing, where you will leave a lot of the gaps of the paper showing through. And you, what you really want to do is just evenly Evenly fill that in. All right, I'm going to finish this water tower here. And this tone underneath the top one is still much more darker than what I got going here. And we have this tree that's kind of nice. It's light, but it's... Okay, what do you say we tackle, tackle those mountains in the background now, huh? So let's just try and divide this thing up in different shapes and then we'll break those shapes down further. So this is, this is kind of what I'm looking at right here. Let me show you. So I'm looking at like this, that piece and then I'm looking at this piece and then I'm looking at this piece and if you wanted to do a fourth then you would have a whole bottom section so that's kind of how I'm gonna break this thing down in my mind and since it's so far back we could get away with it not being exact which is really nice there's one, there's one, okay, so here comes another one, and then this guy's going to dart off and come in like that. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm going to uh, look at this a little bit closely. I'm going to squint my eyes and start to add some light tone. Remember, I want to keep in mind this idea of atmospheric perspective. And I'm just going to divide this mountain range into two tones, the light side and the dark side.
That's all I'm trying to do right now. Now I'm going to go into it and I'm going to add a little more detail. I'm trying to draw lightly. Using surface lines. Now this mountainside is coming up, so I'm going to change my direction of my line a little bit. You really have to concentrate. Got a little dark on me there. Okay. coming up to close to the end here so let's get this last last thing we want to do is to get some clouds in here Okay, let's get these clouds in now. So clouds are also can give a sense of perspective. So let's bottom. Let's think of our bottom of our clouds are going to be flat in a way in this in this idea. And we, we got one that's in the foreground here and he's quite large. And we've got this guy over here and I'm just using flat lines here. Okay. As I'm getting closer to the horizon line, I'm going to start thinking of these things as being a little bit smaller. Puffy on top, flat in the bottom. And we could even add just a slight tone. Let's see if this works here. Yeah, if we add just a slight tone to the blue part of the sky, that will make my clouds, and it's light. Don't go too dark on me there. That will help my clouds to be more white by uh, toning the background back.
Now I'm just kind of going in and defining some of these undersides of these clouds a little bit. The picture doesn't show it, but I I think it makes it look like a better better picture per se. How we look in there? I I think that's pretty good. This is my sign up here. We're gonna I'm gonna tone this, give this just a little bit more tone. All right, I think that's gonna do it. That right there is our water tower. I'm gonna add a little more tone to these forward looking pieces of wood here. Just adding some shapes of darker tone, darker value. And I think that does it. Okay. Well, uh, I'm glad that you stuck around and watched that whole thing. I can't wait to see what your pictures look like. Do put them in Facebook group. And if you are new to our channel, please give me a like and sub subscribe. We do a live drawing every Wednesday and Monday night. Tonight is a landscape. Wednesday we'll be doing portraiture. And in the description below, I have a link to our free class, Beginner's Workshop. And I would recommend that you sign up for that. Okay, that's what I got for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws. And this here is our Monday Night Live of drawing a landscape. And that's it. I can just keep going and on. <laughs> but you're like, okay, Kurt, enough. <laughs> we want to rewatch some of this. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. You guys have a great night. We'll see you later, okay? Bye-bye.